So we are going to be doing now probability experiments with multiple trials. When I say multiple trials, I mean that things are going to be happening several times. So it could be like rolling a dice a certain number of times. I'm going to be talking about these questions as though I'm playing a game and I'm going to tell you the probability of success that I win a game. So there's one that I've got here. I've said suppose the probability that I successfully win a game is 0.25. If I play the game three times, what is the probability that I win exactly once? So I have drawn up this table that I've got here to show all of the possible outcomes that could happen when you play the game. I have used a colored orange square to represent winning the game. So I could win, win, win. And I've used a cross to represent losing the game or being unsuccessful in the game. So you can see this first section that I've got here, I win three games. This second section that I've got here, I win two games. Here, I win one game. And here, I win zero games. So that's the kind of different combinations of things that I've got here. I want to find out what is the probability that I win exactly once. So I'm looking at this section that I've got here. And what you should be able to see is that there are three different ways that I can win the game once. I either win it, um, I win it the first time, or I win it the second time, or I win it the third time. So if I wanted to find this out, the probability that I win exactly once, well, I should probably just figure out the probability of one of them because I think the probability of all three of those should be the same as each other, right? It doesn't matter about the order. It's always going to be a 0 0.25 times a 0 0.75 times a 0 0.75. So the probability I win exactly once is going to be my 0 0.25 times 0 0.75 times 0 0.75. And I'm going to multiply it by 3. Why did I multiply it by 3? because it's three different ways that it could happen. It could happen like this, this, or this. So I'm going to just annotate this. I'm going to say there are three possible ways of winning once. Then this one here is the probability that I win. And then these are probability that I lose. And another one, which is a probability that I lose. So the way that we interpret this sentence is that I'm saying I want to find out the probability that I have a win, a loss, and a loss. And I know that there are three different ways that I could win, lose, lose. Now, probably, I would write this as 3 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.75 squared. And then we just calculate that. So that's 3 times 0 0.25. Just come and take a seat, please, times 0 0.75 squared. And we get the answer, 27 over 64. Or if you wanted it in a decimal, it's a bit long. It's 0 0.421875. A couple of things I want us to notice as you're having a look at what we've got here. I want us to think about these powers. I've got a power of 1, and I've got a power of 2. What should you notice about those powers? They add up to 3, because we are doing the trial, we are playing the game, three times. So it makes sense that there are three probabilities that have been multiplied. Win, lose, lose. The three came up at the beginning because my diagram here shows me that there are three different ways of me winning once and losing twice. I either win the first time, the second time, or the third time. There are no other ways that I could win only once. So now we're going to try and think about this in a different sort of game that we've got on the next page. Has everyone got that written down that they want? Yep. This time, the probability that I successfully win a game is 0 0.3. So I've got a higher probability of winning this game that I've got here. And I'm not going to play the game three times. I'm going to play the game four times. It's a bit like that mixed exercise question we were talking about. Mixed exercise, the question six it was. If I play the game four times, what is the probability that I win exactly three times? So I have, again, this time uh, used this green color to represent what the successful ones are. If it's green, it's a successful win. If there's a cross, it's a fail. And I've called it trial one, two, three, and four. In other words, that's the first time I play the game, the second time, the third time, and the fourth time. So this first one here represents me winning 
all four games. And then I've got this next chunk of games that I've got here, which represents me winning one, two, three games. I'm still going to go down the whole list that I've got. This chunk, just to this, hopefully you can see it on your printed version, there's a slightly darker line to show this. This is the way of me winning two games, yeah? And then I've got this next chunk here is me winning just one game. And then at the bottom, there's obviously only one way that I can lose all four games. You've got to lose, 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 lose. So, which of this section am I going to be concentrating on if I want the probability that I win exactly three times? I'm going to be looking at this section that I've got here. And there are four different ways that I can win three times. I can either win, 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 lose, win, win, lose, win, win, lose, win, win, or lose, win, win, win. If you think there's another way, there isn't. That's all the ways. Even if you think you come up with one, it will be in that list that you've got there. So does anybody think that they can say, given that I'm playing it four times, what is the probability I win exactly three times? So we're going to have a 0 0.3 cubed, because I'm doing it three times. I'm winning three times. What else do I need? Times 0 0.7, so that's losing. And I'm timesing it by four, because there are four possible ways of that happening. So there are four possibilities. This represents three successes. I'm using a slightly different bit of language there. Instead of three wins, I'm saying three successes. And this is one failure. So my probability is 4 times 0 0.3 cubed times 0 0.7, which is, I'm going to go for a decimal this time because it's a nice decimal, 0 0.0756. So this is kind of interesting because you might think if the probability of winning a game is 0 0.3, the thing that people always make the mistake of, to win three games, usually people forget this four at the beginning. They think, oh, I'll just do a win, 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 and a lose. And your probability would be four times smaller than it should be. So we've got a roughly 7% chance of, or 7 or 8% chance of playing a game four times and winning three of them. That kind of feels right, though, doesn't it? Because it's quite unlikely that you win the game. It's only a 30% chance that you win. And winning three out of four should feel like quite a rare thing to occur. So you can probably guess what we're going to now do on the next page. We're now going to increase the number of trials. So we're going to be playing the game this time five times. And I want to find out the probability that I win exactly twice. So suppose the probability that I successfully win a game is now 0.4. My probability of the game is increased. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be 0 0.4 or 3. It could be any probability between uh, 0 and 1. I'm playing the game five times. What is the probability I win exactly twice? So this took a while to try and write these all out here. And you are not going to need to write these all out in an exam. We're going to try and spot the patterns. But it looks like this is my way of winning five games. There's only one way of winning all five. And unsurprisingly, there are five ways of winning four games, because I could have the losing in each of the different game positions. This section that we've got here is winning three games, so make sure that you carefully do it. This is me winning three different games that I've got. There should be 10 different ways of winning three games. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in that list here. And then this next chunk, there is going to be, um, how many games? Two games. So it's going to be these, 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 and these. So it's this whole chunk here is the ways that I could win two games. Then I've got this chunk here for winning one game. And then this bottom chunk is the only way that I could lose all of my games. So which section of this do I want to look at, given that I win exactly twice? The third one, the one that says two, right? Because I want to win twice. So I'm looking at this section that we've got here. Now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ways of winning it in two, uh, of winning two out of the five games. 
So does anybody think that they can tell me what they think the probability I win exactly twice should be? Ikrim? So you've got 0 0.4 to the power of uh, four. I don't think it should be to the power of 4. I think it should be because I'm winning twice. I think I'm going to win twice. And then times by 0 0.6 to the power of? Nope. How many times am I losing if it's for this section? I'm losing three times. So I'm winning twice, and I'm losing three times. But you said to multiply by 5 at the beginning. I don't think I should be multiplying by 5 for this. There are 10 different ways that you can win twice and lose three times. You just have to, well, you don't have to believe me. You can imagine, just guess a way of winning twice and losing three times. You will find it somewhere in that list because that is the only possible combinations of that. So I'm going to multiply it by 10. The 10 is the possible combinations. I'm just going to write the possible combos. Because we want to know about winning twice, this is the probability that I win twice. I think on the previous page I wrote successful twice. I wrote two successes, so I'm going to do the same thing. And then I want there to be three failures. And then I'll just get that on my calculator. So that's 10 times 0.4 squared times 0.6 cubed. So that's 0.3456. So about a third, 34%, that's roughly a third. I've got a one in three chance that if I played the game five times, I would win two of them, which kind of feels reasonable, doesn't it? If it's a 40% chance that you would win and you're playing it five times, 0 0.4 times five is two, obviously. I don't know why I did that on my calculator. So that's the most expected thing you would you'd think you'd win. You think you'd win two of them. The probability that you win two of them is 0 0.3456. It's actually not as high as maybe we would expect it to be because quite easily we could have ended up with maybe one of these combos here. You could have got one of these. It's probably going to be a bit rarer that you come up with it, but there's a lot of possible combinations that could come up. So out of these things that we've got written here, out of, uh, let's say, this bit or this bit, which of these is the easiest, the yellow or the orange? The orange. The orange should be the easiest one, right? Because you just want to say, okay, well, that's win twice, lose three times. This is the thing that's going to be harder for us to figure out because I don't want you to write this out. I don't want you to have to write this out. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can spot what patterns there might be, okay? So on this page that I've got here, you'll notice how for doing it six times, the trial of it being six times, there's even more combinations. Does anybody know how many extra combos there are each time we add another trial in? How one thing compares to the next, how, how much bigger the graph gets each time? Any guesses? It doubles. it doubles each time. Okay, it doubles each time. Here, we've got that there are um, four, then we've got eight, then we've got 16, 32, 64. If we played the game seven times, we'd have 128 different combinations, and I'd never want you to have to write that down, okay? So let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. We have got, for winning both games in this one, there is one combination. For winning just one game, there are two combinations, and here there is one combination of winning neither, okay? So you might like to, because it may not have printed very well, you might like to kind of separate these. Previously, I was writing down how many successes there are. I'm now writing down the number of combos. Let's, let's try the next one. Let's just try the next one and see what happens. But here we've got, there's one combination. For winning two games, we've got three. And for winning one game, we've got three. And for winning no games, we've got one. I can hear people starting to spot what's happening. So if, what do you think the pattern is going to then be for this next one? What? Okay, so it's going to go one, four, six, four, one. Come on, what's going on here? 
These are the binomial expansion coefficients, okay? So this, these numbers, we've always had access to them because we know about the binomial coefficients. So I'm still gonna do it for this one. For five, it goes one, five, 10, 10, five, one. And I'm just gonna put those dividing lines in there because they're not super easy to see. Then for the six, we have one, I can't squeeze it on the other side. We have one, six, uh, 15. I think it's 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Mm. The middle bit is 20. Then it's, 15. then it's 15. Then it's 6. And then it's 1. Actually, of course, I could have known it's 20 because 10 and 10 is 20. 5 and 10 is 15. 5 and 1 is 6, et cetera, et cetera. So these things all come from the binomial coefficients. I'm going to see if there's a quick way about how we might do this. So first of all, we said, what's the pattern? It's binomial coefficients. How can we predict the number of different ways of achieving a certain number of successes? Well, we're going to use the binomial coefficients that we've got here. Now, first thing that I think is pretty clear to spot is that the first one, there's always going to just be one combination of winning all of them or being successful in all of them. And there's always going to be one combination at the other end of failing all of them, because that just makes sense, right? there will always be the same number of, um, of combos of, of either winning three or winning one for this game uh, as there are a number of trials. Again, that should make sense that the, the, the failure moves to the four different positions or the success moves to the four different positions. It's these middle ones that are a bit trickier for us to think about. So these are all to do with the binomial coefficients. We're gonna try and I've literally stolen this binomial distribution slide back from my binomial expansion slides because it's the same kind of thing that we've got here. So this is Pascal's triangle. We spotted these numbers coming up just now. And now we've got these kinds of numbers that we've got here. And I'm going to try and explain what these things mean. I'm actually going to just grab this one that we've got here. This one means that there are three trials and two successes. Three trials and two successes goes with three. Let's just see if that's true. Three trials, two successes, there are three combos. So let's see if we can pick another one from this triangle that we've got here. Let's do uh, this one here. This is four trials, two successes. From here it's a six. So let's look on our typed out one. We've got four trials. The two successes are these ones, and there are six different ways of that possibly happening. So what you can write down for your notes is that to use this, you're going to have, we know it goes n choose r. This is the number of trials, and then the successes go on the bottom. So when you type that onto your calculator, it will go n choose r. You know how to use the choose function on your calculator, right? How do you do that on the graphics one? On the graphics one, the choose function, I will have to come and have a look at that when we start doing an exercise because I can't remember off the top of my head. Yep. It's option and then probability. Oh, it's, an, it's in options, then probability, and then it will, it will come up from there, okay? But it's, I always think it's worth having like your old calculator with you as well because it's useful to have two screens at the same time. So now we're going to try and answer these questions without having to draw out all of the possible combinations. Because drawing out all of the combinations <coughs> is very, very difficult to do. When I tried to make this, um, these ones I've got here, I made them on a spreadsheet. I kept missing one out because humans aren't good at doing those kinds of things. But we will be good at doing this kind of stuff. Okay. So now we're playing a game 15 times. How many different ways are there of me winning exactly five times? So what's my binomial coefficient going to look like? What's going to be my numbers inside here? 15, 15 and 5. So I'm going to type onto my calculator, 15, choose, 5. I'm going to make that choose nice and big. 15, choose, 5. 3,003. So there are 3,003 different ways 
of taking 15 trials and only winning <coughs> three of them. And I don't think our brains would have expected, to do, expected it to be that high, would we? So now we're actually going to have a look at this. I've said, given that the probability of me winning is 0 0.36, what is the probability that I win exactly five of the 15 games? So the probability that I win exactly five, whoops, is going to be equal to 15 choose 5 multiplied by 0.36 what? 0.36 to the power of 5 because I'm going to win it 5 times. 0 0.64 to the power of 10 because I want to lose 10 times. So that's going to be 3,003 multiplied by 0.36 to the power of 5 multiplied by 0.64 to the power of 10. Let's see. 3,003. 0 0.2093. We're going to get into the habit of doing four decimal places. So there's like a 20%, a 1 in 5 chance that if you played this game 15 times, there's a 20% chance you'd probably win five of them. But... If the probability of winning was 0 0.36, we would expect to win 0 0.36 of 15. We would expect to win 0 0.36 of 15. We'd expect to win 36% of the 15 games. We would expect to win 5.4 games. So the probability of winning five is about 20%. The probability of winning six is probably going to be a big percentage. But the probabilities as we get further away from this five or six What's going to happen to the probabilities if we get further away from it, do you think? It's, it's going to get smaller and smaller because it's going to become more and more rare for it to happen. The probability of uh, winning all 15 of them would be 0 0.36 to the power of 15, which is insanely small. It's something times 10 to the power of minus 7. So this is a very powerful tool to try and make predictions about things and how they are going to happen. Okay, so we're going to just do that bit as the intro to this, and then we're going to go into a definition on the next bit.